Plus, there are also some new questions on this Sunday about what will happen to the Clinton Foundation if Mrs. Clinton becomes president. What they plan to do, but will it prevent any conflicts of interest? Some critics don't buy it. They say if Hillary becomes president, uh, you know, this will stop. Uh, they will stop accepting donations from foreigners and from corporations. Uh, well, why would they do that if it's, if it's perfectly fine? And if it's not fine, why would they wait until then to do it? The Clinton Foundation taking steps this week to avoid any potential conflicts of interest should Hillary Clinton be elected president this fall. The organization announcing plans for both Hillary and Bill Clinton to step down from their roles should that happen. Their daughter Chelsea, however, is planning to stay on the board. Hillary Clinton says it will take some time to shift the leadership of the Clinton Foundation to other parties. You don't just turn on and off and on switch, even trying to negotiate uh, with partner groups takes uh, a lot of uh, serious effort. Here's what we're going to make sure of, that, you know, the good work that these programs are doing continues. Uh, I know the foundation is looking for partners, but that's going to take some time to carry out. All right, David Avella is the chairman of GOPAC and a GOP strategist, and Mark Levine is a radio show talk host. Uh, thank you both for joining us. Hello. Thanks for having us. So Mrs. Clinton says the foundation is linked to numerous partner groups. It will take time and individual negotiations for each partner to find the right fit. And uh, Mrs. Clinton is not stepping down unless and until she wins the election. And that leaves open the possibility that people seeking influence could hurry up and get in their donations now. Uh, Mark, should moves to spin off parts of the foundation have begun sooner to avoid such conflicts? Well, we got to remember how much good the foundation does. I mean, this is half of all adults with AIDS and three quarters of children with AIDS all over the globe get their medications because of the Clinton Foundation. It helps 430 million people worldwide, 18 million American students, everything from child obesity to uh, women's uh, getting e equal pay. I mean, this is something that's a major, major operation that does a lot of good. So, you know, I, I, George Bush Sr. didn't shut down his foundation raising money for his library when his son became president of the United States. And I think that I understand why they're shutting it down to avoid any kind of appearance. But let's not pretend there's anything really wrong with it. Well, David, uh, as you know, this is a controversy because of the accusations that Mrs. Clinton, while she was secretary of state, sold access to her office in exchange for donations to the foundation. Uh, the latest batch of released emails from the State Department shows that big donors from non-government agencies appear to have been rewarded with access to Mrs. Clinton at the very least, and that access might have led to other benefits. Uh, let's see how the DNC chair is defending that on CBS News. When Republicans meet with their donors, with their supporters, their activists, they call it a meeting. When Democrats do that, they call it a conflict. Um, it's not pay to play unless somebody, you know, actually gave someone 50 cents to say, I need a meeting. No. You know, David, is that true? You can't call it a quid pro quo unless someone gives you cash and says, I want to buy a meeting. Isn't pay for play usually more subtle than that? We don't know what was said in those meetings. That, that's why we can't tell whether it's pay to play, uh, despite what Donna Brazil just said. Look, the Clinton Foundation underscores that the fact that it doesn't matter. The foundation is irrelevant to this topic as a whole. It really speaks to who Hillary Clinton is as a person. And the Clintons will use any vehicle they can to use, bend, or just break the laws to their advantage. And it's why uh, the Annenberg uh, Public Policy Center had a focus group that Peter Hart, a Democrat, did the focus group and found that of all the participants, half of them gave her a one on the question of honesty, and no one gave her an, a score above a six on honesty. Uh, mm -hmm. The foundation is just another vehicle for the Clintons to go and uh, do what they want in getting to being above the law. Mark, uh, I'll ask you the same question. Uh, isn't pay for play usually more subtle than you know someone actually saying I'm I'm doing this to buy influence with you in your political position? 
I, I actually find this whole discussion amazing. So every single politician in the United States, federal, state, and local, tens of thousands of politicians, take money from donors, and many of them meet with their donors. That's exactly what GOPAC, David's organization, does. They raise money, and in fact, when Newt Gingrich ran GOPAC, he said for $10,000, you could get an uninterrupted hour with Newt and try to influence him on policy. That is our system. Now, Democrats are fighting against this system. We don't like money in politics. We want this to be transparent. Transparent. We had the Disclose Act in Congress, which, which the Republicans said, no, we refuse to disclose our donors. The Clinton Foundation has disclosed all of their donors. And guess what? The money isn't going to Bill and Hillary Clinton. The money is going to help people all around the globe, whereas Republicans are pocketing this money. They develop this system. They support this system. I mean, do you support, David, overturning Citizens United and public financing and all the things we liberals want to get money out of the system? No. Look at Donald Trump's economic advisors. Who are they? A bunch of white male billionaires, all of whom stand to profit from his policies. Let's let David in, please. David, 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 Mark happened to, Mark happened to leave, leave out the fact that the Clintons sold access to, to them through the Lincoln bedroom. Now, I know that was almost 20 years ago, but heck, they allowed donors to buy their ability to go sleep in the Lincoln bedroom. So, what is Donald, uh, this, what do you give your donors to campaign finance reform that Mark is all of a sudden championing is, is is a bit uh, perhaps uh, serendipitous and uh uh, but and he look he lives in a state in Virginia and runs is a state delegate in a state in Virginia where they have no campaign That's finance right. laws and, and, and I don't Republicans see elected like officials going to jail. In fact, Mark, you you in the that. news, you'd find out that a Republican governor didn't do anything wrong and the Supreme Court was with him. He did meet with a donor and wasn't given any access. So this, he did more this than meet with them. He got gifts for his daughter's wedding and a Rolex watch. Right. And you support I'm that. I'm being told I have to wrap, guys. Hope maybe you can finish this off camera. I don't know. Thank you, Poe. David Avella, Mark Levine, thanks for joining us. I think you need one of those NFL, you know, uh, whistles. You know, you know, referee yes. whistle. Have you heard about this in North Korea?